just a note this video is not a how-to um, there's some great write-ups on some forums about how to change your fuel pump this is more about returning the fuel back into the system in an efficient way so you don't get fuel starvation okay today we're going to be installing this 320 litre per hour AEM pump into my modified fuel housing and I'll uh, explain why I've done all of this this is my customised OEM in-tank fuel holder um, it's had a few little changes to it as you can see um, uh, as the car's running a return system this is now the return um, it used to be the feed and I'll show you on the underside a little lighter this is now the feed this is an AN6 fitting I'll take you through the system uh, this connects to again to focus a AN6 fitting with a hose tail and this comes down around the side into the pump which you can see in there in its holder Obviously we've had to modify this ever so slightly to get it to fit. Um, more about that hole in a little while. This is obviously new. The return on the original system used to come from the fuel pressure regulator that's sitting here. And it used to come down into this fitting here. This is a jet and what this, allows, what this does is try to push fuel into the carrier. Um, it's the only way basically to get fuel into the system or into the carrier um, and when you're running a return system this has got a little jet in it it's so restrictive that um, it increases your fuel pressure so you have to relieve it and the best way I've found to do that is to include a I believe this is an 8mm Y joint um, and this comes down and goes into a new fitting which dumps the fuel coming from the return straight back in into this. <coughs> this is all movable. Um, it's a bit of a pain to get in and out of the tank but it does work. It's very close. What I'll do now is I'll open it up and show you inside and we'll uh, swap the pump. Okay we've started taking it apart and uh, as you can see in there that big hole that's the original fuel filter for the car. Obviously it's a return in the tank system um, and as you can see here this is the fitting goes straight into the plastic i uh, not ever had a problem with that. Um, the two connectors, one is the fuel level and the other one's the pump power. Okay, so this is the uh, Walbury 255 that's currently in there. As you can see, it sits in the original place. The Walbury 255 is slightly larger than the original pump. Um, as you can see, this usually would clip on, but it can't. Um, and this is where this line comes in and goes down and feeds in here. Now the reason why that hole is there is to try and draw more fuel in as this shoots a jet down here and swells into the main chamber. Um, obviously that little hole that you can see behind the brass fitting is the original jet. Uh, so, let's move the pump out of the way. Um, and yes, you can see that's the uh, fuel filter that goes directly onto the pump. Um, I'd be really using this. Um, and that's pretty much all the modifications. I've made some little holes here and there for tie wraps just to hold everything in securely. Um, so let's uh, get to swapping the pump. Okay, as you can now see, the uh, AEM fuel pump is in there. Um, it's slightly smaller than the Walbro, and so I've used cable ties to hold it to the bottom of the holder. Everything else fits nice and snugly, all back in place. This has all gone back okay. This is the original wires for the original pump. They fit perfectly. No, uh, no need to change anything there. Um, and uh, so let's uh, start putting it back together again. Right, as you can see, it's all back together again. Uh, everything's back in its place. I've uh, added an additional tie wrap in there for security. Um, if you do decide to do this um, to your setup, if you're doing a return fuel system, please make sure that you remember that this gets pushed down basically onto these stops here. So you need to make sure that all of your cables and all of your fuel line plumbing actually clears, which is exactly why I'm using a 90 degree here. So this is what the uh, setup looks like in the car. This obviously is the feed to the rail, and this is the return. Um, this is just jubilee clipped on. The AN6 hose fits pretty nicely. Um, not had a leak ever from here. It's obviously proper AN fittings is never gonna leak. Um, and one other thing that I have done is uh, I rewired the plug. So the 
the black and the yellow wire there are the fuel sender and the red and the black wires here are all the way from the fuse box in the front of the car there's a relay in the middle to switch it on but it's basically getting as much voltage to the pump as possible that fuel pump is completely silent which coming from a Walbro which was making a lot of noise that was really struggling quite hard to uh, get 50 psi in this setup on the new setup um, that's completely silent I'm blown away by that okay so uh, in conclusion that's a great upgrade we've just done uh, last makes more power put more fuel into the engine if needed it's definitely quiet and the pump down that is completely silent I can't hear it at all when it's running which is great because the other one was really quite loud because it was spinning very very fast to keep up with what the fuel system required. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll try and get back to you and answer, answer as much as I can. Um, if you like the video, like the video, that always helps. Um, if you like the videos and you want to see what the car makes when you put it on the wrong road with a supercharger on it, subscribe because there'll definitely be a video on that. And uh, thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying them.